A new charger just landed, guys. We're gonna check out the Toolkit RC M7 AC Edition. Hey guys, I'm Rebecca. You have a chance to win this DJI FPV drone, the case, and two batteries. We're gonna choose one of the next 100,000 subscribers to be our lucky winner. So please subscribe, good luck, and happy FPV. Welcome back to the Drone Camps channel today. Something new in the house. We're going to check out the Toolkit RC M7AC and what's the big difference between this one and the original M7? Well, the original M7 came out earlier this year and it has about half the power that this one has. This one is an upgraded version. It has 50% more power, 300 watt output in here, and it has a built-in fan. It also has support for AC adapter that they now include in the box. So you can make this a bench charger, uh, or you can take it out in the field and charge from an XT60 with a large battery and charge a bunch of your 4S1300 standard batteries uh, or any types of LiPos with an XT30 or an XT60 connector on there. It has a cool sliding door on the front right here that allows you to change the output at will. So that's kind of cool. It has a balance board on here as well. Uh, it also has USB output at 2.1 amp. So if you're charging your phone or any USB devices, you can do that. Uh, one thing about this one also is that it's about twice the size of the original M7 as far as weight is concerned. So if you're traveling and that's a concern for you, that's one thing to note about it. It's also about twice the price of the original M7 uh, with all the new features packed in here. But let's go ahead and put it on the bench. Let's go over it together. Let me show you some of the new features and uh, let's go through some of the specs together and you can decide for yourself if it's um, the charger you're looking for. I'll put the link down below and my discount code is always 8% off. Here we go, let's check out the M7AC. Okay guys, this is the box that you get. Inside the box you get the charger, an AC cable, and a USB cable for updates. Now let's go ahead and jump right into it. You can power this one from the AC cord that comes in the box, and you can also power it from the XT60 in the back for DC input. DC and AC input, that's nice. Um, another thing is that this version also includes an on-off switch. It does not work for the battery input, but it does work for the AC input. So um, it's right next to the AC input right there. Flip that switch and your charger turns on. Across the front of the charger, we have a few different types of outputs. We have a USB output at 2.1 amp. We have a signal output here, a balance port from two to six S batteries, which is cool. That's what most of you guys want. And we have a switchable sliding door here for the output for your battery. We have XT30 on this side. On this side, we have the XT60. And we have 300 watts of DC power output here from 7 to 28 volt for the input. It also has a max input of 20 amp and a max output of 15 amp. And this little guy will charge different types of batteries, including LiPo, LiHVs, which is cool, LiFE. It'll charge Lions, and it'll charge all the way from 1 to 6S. It'll also charge Nickel Metal um, from 1 to 12S, and PB as well from 1 to 10S. It also has an upgraded discharge rate as well at 15 amp max discharge rate at 300 watts so you can recycle those batteries or discharge them. And the screen on here is an IPS display of the screen and it's 320 by 240 pixels wide. And I also noticed on this version of the charger that they upgraded the side plates so they have some kind of metal looking embossed toolkit RC logo there. And on this side also the same metal look with some venting here and an SD card support. It does have voice on here as well so you can download voice packs from the toolkit RC website. Now also new on this version of the charger we have a kickstand in the back that folds down and folds up just makes it a little more convenient for the angle when you're trying to set up a new battery charge so we're going to use the xt60 port on this side here we're going to charge a, a 6s battery but as soon as you plug in the xt60 you can see the current voltage on the battery so it's kind of like a a battery checker as well and we plug in the balance port there then we can see the cells show up and if we scroll across we get different types of um, information here and some of you guys want all this information some of you guys don't really care but this shows you all of the different cell balance um, charge right what we have in each cell currently and it looks like this battery does need a charge so we could go ahead and hit this jog wheel and this will take us to the type of battery we're charging this is a standard lipo um, 
I'm going to change it back to LiPo there because I want 4.2 volt for my ending volt per cell. And you can change the charge current. You can go all the way up to um, as high as you want there, 15 amp. But I don't suggest charging a 10, 50 milliamp 6S battery at, at 15 amp. Um, you could have a fire in your house. So uh, I always recommend charge with a battery bunker um, to make sure you have ultimate safety and somewhere you got good ventilation in case something does go up in smoke. Now, this is not set to auto right now, so you also have the option to do auto, which will automatically detect what type of cell battery this is, all the way from 1S to 6S, so it automatically turns it for you. Um, I usually keep it on auto because I'm in a hurry a lot, but you can do it manually as well. So I can change this all the way up to six here. That matches our battery. We have a LiPo charge, and you can also discharge and storage charge. We're gonna leave it on charge. We're going to leave our current at 1.5 amp. It's kind of a slow charge, but it takes care of the battery. And we're going to charge to 25.20 volt. And now we're charging. And if you move the jog wheel, you can see the different voltage in the battery per cell here. So that's kind of cool. You can also see more information if you scroll across. Your current amp coming into the battery, 1.5 amp. And we have our total voltage in right here, up at the very top. It has the C rating there for um, how hot the temperature is. This is Celsius. That's inside the charger. And it has an internal built-in fan. It has a, has a real fan in the back here. So uh, a physical fan is nice on a charger instead of just a heat sink coming off of it. Some of the smaller chargers have heat sinks instead of um, an internal fan like uh, the little tiny M4 here has this little heat sink right here. It's not a physical fan. It has lots of venting, but it has this metal heat sink in the bottom. You can kind of see that. I prefer a physical fan. So now this battery, once it's charged, it's going to go ahead and beep, and you can press and hold exit there, and we're just going to try to exit this charge. Press the jog wheel as well to stop it there. And we're going to go out right there. And if you want to go into the system menu, it's pretty easy to do that. Press and hold the jog wheel, and that should take you into the setup menu here. So we can go ahead and check out the setup menu for input settings. You can change power select, power type, adapter, or AC or DC, max power, 110 watt, um, max current, voltage range, security settings here, safe internal setup, ADC, it would be nice if we could change that uh, Celsius uh, over to Fahrenheit for US users. Personalization, backlight, we can change the backlight up or down, make that a little dimmer. We can go all the way up to 10. It's kind of nice. They had it set to about 6 here on the backlight. I'm going to put it on 8. And we can change the volume have those beeps a little lower, or we can change them off to off. I prefer it to be kind of uh, on medium there, just in case a battery, it lets me know when the battery is charged. But it does have announcement volume too, that's cool. So um, announcement means that it's going to let you know when it's done charging. Warning volume, you can change. Set that to high if you want. If you're in the other room, which you shouldn't be when you're charging, um, when it's done, or it has some kind of warning. Language, English. Uh, we have Deutsch, uh, French, Italian, Portuguese, Espanol, looks like Mandarin, Korean. And we're just going to leave it set to English because I don't know how to read the rest of those languages. Theme style, light. You can also change it to dark. I usually prefer the dark setting here. Um, I really like the dark setting. Battery selection is off, on. Continuous work, work completed. To end, uh, balance start default and you can change it back to default and each one has a serial number so um, that's pretty much everything in the charger itself now let me give you some final opinion and some drone truths on the toolkit rc m7 ac now i have my original d6 duo pro here the hoda charger um, and this is a, an older older version it has charging on the top it has dual channel support here and this has been a workhorse for me. Um, it has 200 watt AC output, uh, 15 amp, the same as this one as well. Um, this one has 100 watt on the AC, by the way. So, um, and and it also has 15 amp 
on both outputs, so or both inputs, AC and DC. But here's the thing. This is the the newer version of this one is around $125. Um, the the Toolkit RC M7AC is $115 right now. I guess with my 8% discount, you guys could probably knock it down to like um, maybe around $105, get 10 bucks off. Uh, so, you know, should you get something that has single port support? If you're going to use a balance or parallel board, you're comfortable with that. Uh, I, I recommend doing that. I, I'll put a link down below for a balance board for guys who are going to grab this one. Um, me personally, I would go for something with dual channel support because I'm usually charging at least two batteries at once. Now, rarely am I ever charging like one battery at a time. Um, and I feel like Toolkit RC probably should should make an, an M7 or an M8 with two ports on there. Um, I would love to see an M7 with two. Uh, but I, I think, that, again, that'll probably increase the price more and then it'll be more than the Hoda. So, uh, uh, you know, it's, that's kind of tough. But this charger is much larger. Um, so if you're not worried about size, this one has a lot of the, the same types of, um, basically the same types of specs. It's just double the size. And I think that this one would probably be double the size as well if it had two ports on the front. So um, they're trying to make this a little more compact. And I, I guess that's the, the thing they're going for here is compact and, and portable uh, versus something much larger. Recently on my Europe trip, I wanted to take this charger with me, but I didn't want to carry it because it's it's gigantic. So um, in a pinch, if I'm traveling in a hotel setup situation, I would rather have something like this. Even though I can only charge one battery at a time, I can bring my parallel board with me and still be carrying less weight than something like the Hoda. Um, so that's kind of the, you know, the conundrum there. If you're going to charge at home, um, the best bench charger for me currently is like the Hoda series. Um, and, and that works great for me. And it's just a workhorse. You can see it's been used uh, a ton. I, I've, I've used the crap out of this charger and I love it. But I also have all of the, the Toolkit RC chargers. And I haven't, had a, I haven't had any problems with them. They all still work for me. Um, probably my ultimate travel charger though, even over this one, would be the M4 because it also has that AC adapter. I can convert it over to um, the EU plug if I need to. And I, I have a lot less to deal with. Recently, I took a trip to Sacramento and I took one of these with me um, so that I could fly and review drones for you guys. But um, yeah, I'll put the links down below for each one of these. If you want to pick any of them up, be sure to use my discount code. It's BG Davis 2022 that one's working for eight percent off um, but i appreciate you guys watching the reviews and checking out what's new i got more new stuff coming up this week and a new dji avada review and lots of drone truths coming up so stay tuned and uh, stay fly guys keep it up i will see you on the next one take care